الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good morning everyone I hope you're all well Inshallah it's a, it's a lovely day here in Liverpool and um, I'm particularly honoured with the guests that we have sitting next to me and um, it's just at a really interesting time for us um, uh, as, we, as we come here to Felicity House. For those of you who've been following uh, the Futuwa uh, retreats that we've been holding over the last three, four years, uh, we've slowly been developing ourselves in, in, in different aspects, in different ways. And I think by God's providence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, tawfiq, many of us have gravitated towards um, the martial arts. And this has been the topic of discussion for us over the last couple of months uh, when we've been having our Futuwa gatherings. Uh, and in particular, the art of Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I was invited to the first Futuwa retreat in 2014 to teach over a period of two weeks, twice a day. Now, um, if you've never done jiu-jitsu before and you train for the first time, you are physically sore for months. <laughs> yeah? So it was a big uh, task for many of our participants and they struggled, no doubt. But from that, they developed a great taste, a great love for this noble art. And with that noble art um, was a, a reminder of really the prophetic way in which, inshallah, we all hope to strive towards. Um, I don't want to go too much into the art of jiu-jitsu today because we have uh, in our presence, in my estimation, one of the great gems of jiu-jitsu uh, in the UK. It's quite a hidden gem and uh, it's somebody that hopefully today we can uh, expose and bring out and share with us because uh, alongside this, this gathering for, for its, its many intentions, it is also to inaugurate or to start um, the, the beginning of his classes here today. So I just want to first like to introduce to you uh, Mario Sukata Neto. Mario is from Brazil. He's a Brazilian through and through, I believe. <laughs> and um, he is the honor uh, of being a Carlson Gracie black belt. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the, crazy, the Gracie family and their, 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 their history, <coughs> Carlson Gracie black belts are few and far between. Carlson didn't give, him, didn't give out many black belts, and you, you, you know who they are, and he's one of them. He's a fourth degree black belt in the art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he's a rare breed of fighter and coach. You can be a really good fighter, and you're, you're great, you're smashing everyone, and you're doing really, really well. Or you can be a really good instructor, and you can teach people well. It's hard to find a mix of the two. And in Mario, you have both. His career has successfully crossed over many ranges of combat, bare knuckle fighting. Valetudo, if you guys are familiar with that terminology, no rules. Mario has fought in no rules fights. And uh, has fought in the, the pinnacle of MMA. Uh, he is a veteran of the UFC. Uh, he possesses great talent and has a great understanding of how people learn. And today, hopefully, we can shed some light on how uh, Mario has uh, developed himself and, and given back now to the art of jiu-jitsu. Mario is from Recife, from, from the north of Brazil. So Mario, I just want to bring you in here a little bit and just uh, to give people a uh, kind of background to where you were from and how you grew up. Can you just tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, where, where you were born and growing up in Brazil when you started jiu-jitsu? Good morning, everyone. Well, um, I'm born, I was born in Recife, it's in North Brazil. Um, but I grew up in, in, in a city called João Pessoa, it's one and a half hour 
of um, outside receive. I was telling you before, um, my gym was around of uh, kickboxers and the uh, boxing gyms. So we used to do jujitsu and, and a carpet like the one you wear now, had no mats, and no one know what jujitsu was back in time. Uh, I was already, I knew what jujitsu was because um, I was I was doing judo before. I was starting judo when I was eight years old, and I always heard about uh, jujitsu, but not the Brazilian jujitsu, the traditional jujitsu. Then I met this this coach from Rio, and he came to live in my town, and we started training jujitsu. Um, because I didn't have much competition. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu competition, I started doing MMA back in time, Valitude was bare knuckle fight. So my first fight, I was 21 years old, 20, 20 years old, and had this big, massive guy, and I was only a kid, and I won. Um, and then that's how the sport became like famous in my town after my fight. Following this, I had two or three more fights, local fights, and then I, f I had the opportunity to fight Dan Seven, which back in time was like the, world, the UFC champion, a heavyweight UFC champion, and we fought for 40 minutes, half an hour and a normal time, and 10 minutes and overtime. And then I decided that I need to learn more, because as I said before, I was, I was living in a small town in, in Brazil, so I moved to, to Rio, where is the source where the jiu-jitsu and all the good fighters was in Rio. And then that's when I start more related with, with, with Carson Grace, because before that I used to see him once a year, just before tournaments. And then, um, just making sure, pretty short for you guys to understand, <laughs> Carson had to move to America. I started training with the Brazilian top team, it was like the top black belts from Carson Grace started his own team which is called Brazilian Top Team. I started training with them and then moved to, to Belgium and then trained in Holland for, for in the Golden Glory, which is probably one of the best Muay Thai teams in Europe. Following this, I, f I went to Russia to fight an eight-man tournament and then I won. And then I moved back to, came, came back to England and then start training, fight, and then I got invited to, to coach what was probably the best UK MMA team, which is called Wolf Slayer, where I don't know if you guys heard, but Michael Bisping came from the Wolf Slayer, and then later on, Rampage Jackson and Queen, um, Jay Congo came to train with us. So in four years' time, the Wolf Slayer became the best um, team in, in, in the whole UK and the number five in the, in the world. I, I just want to make a point here. So we've got a lot of UFC armchair viewers, you know, people who have never trained MMA before, done any jiu-jitsu or any type of training, and they're very familiar with the names that you've mentioned, the likes of Michael Bisping, uh, Rampage Jackson. Um, Mario is head coach of Wolfslayer. He was Michael Bisping's jiu-jitsu and MMA coach, instructor. Quinton Jackson, Rampage Jackson, you're looking at his teacher, okay? So this is the context, of, I'm trying to give people an understanding of, you know, not only who we're talking with here, but also who, inshallah, you'll be learning from. You know, it's, it's a really important thing. I, I just want to highlight one of the things that uh, I think, Dan Seven, I don't know if any of the brothers are familiar with the early UFCs, the first UFCs. So Huis Gracie, which I know you all know, uh, fought Dan Seven in, um, in, 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 in the first UFC, and he won after a long match with a, with a triangle choke. Mario, how old were you when you fought Dan? Uh, 21. Can I get a show of hands of 21 year olds or the brothers here? Anyone under 25? Don't be shy. <laughs> it's an amazing achievement. It's an amazing achievement, is the point I'm making, and it's something that you really need to take seriously. It was a 30 minute fight. 30 minute fight, half an hour. You guys remember what we were doing here yesterday? The sprawls and the burpees, it was, how long, how long did we do it for? Five minutes. He was in a fight with one of the, you know, at the time, Dan Seven is a, is a formidable wrestler for 40 minutes, okay? 
And this is an MMA fight, this is a real fight. This is not like, you know, grappling. This is a fight. Mario has wins over Gary Goodridge. You guys here, you know their MMA? Gary Goodridge. Travis Fulton, Iron Man. Travis Fulton, uh, without exaggeration, has over 300 MMA fights. Mario beat him. Yeah? There are many other people. You can go online and look at these up. And these are no exaggerations. What we're trying to highlight here, and it's not bravado, it's just an understanding and appreciation for the art form. And hopefully what we're going to come on to discuss is uh, Mario's uh, superiority in his, his grappling skills, his jiu-jitsu, his mindset, his philosophy towards the, the combat arts. So that was, that was really nice to hear, uh, Mario. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, just coming back now a little bit towards your uh, jiu-jitsu and life lessons. Can you just tell us a little bit over the years of, of training jiu-jitsu, what jiu-jitsu what life lessons you've taken from jiu-jitsu that you can apply to different spheres of your, of your life? I'm going to try to put in words, but as we said before, jiu-jitsu lifestyle is, is it's like until you absorb, until we be in the source, which is in Brazil, and breathe and eat jiu-jitsu and sleep jiu-jitsu, it's quite hard to explain, but I'll try my best. <laughs> it's give you confidence outside and outside the mat. It's, it, it makes you rumble. I mean, it makes you understand people. It's like when you see a black belt rolling with a white belt and then don't, don't take advantage of that. That's respect. That's when you respect people. And, and it, it's teaching and then show how important learning and teaching is. We learn, I'm a black belt for, since 2000, uh, um, since 1997, and I'm still learning. I'm learning every day. I learn with my students, the white belts. And uh, this is sport, this combat sport, probably is the only one when you, as a white belt, can create your own movement without no one showing you, without you never seen before. And then I might, might don't know, or never seen what you've just done then, and I learn with you. And then we, you won't have that in another sport another combat sport, only in this. And I was very, very, very shy kid, and I still a bit. You don't know how hard for me to be now here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you just help me, I mean, dealing with people, because I, I, I give a lot of seminars for the year, and then have to compete, have to explain and train with people, so you just help me with that. And help me, as I said before, understand the people, why, why sometimes the white, the, the, the strong, is, can beat the, the, the weak, but Andrew, you just told me that the weak can beat the strong, mm. right? And then you're gonna see as you learn, as you roll in Jiu Jitsu, <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm 60 and a half stone, and then he can beat me here, you know what I mean? That's not, it's not, not that, enough to do with the size on Jiu Jitsu. That's a lifestyle. Mm. Very interesting lessons, and we've, we've reflected on this as well. Um, in, in some of our discussions about jiu-jitsu. Um, what advice would you give to people who are perhaps apprehensive or a little bit scared to start jiu-jitsu? Because they, 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 they look at you, they even look at me, and you know, things are broken and things are sore and hurting, and they're a little apprehensive. What advice would you give to somebody who's, who's well, a little scared? Every, everything you don't know is kind of scary if you don't know what it is. But as I said, as you said before, you take the first class, you might be sore for one, two weeks, maybe more. But I give always seven, I always give it one week. If you pass the first week, you're addicted. Because it's so addicted. The way, I, I just, you're gonna learn so many stuff. Not only, not only the grapple, not only the techniques in jiu-jitsu, but as I just said, for your life outside jiu-jitsu. There is no, one good thing about jiu-jitsu, there is no strikes, so you won't get hurt. It's not like when you strike, when you, we, we box or we tie boxing, there is no time before then I hit you. In Jiu Jitsu, if I put you in a submission, if you tap, you know, that's it, there's no injury there. You might injury, okay, injure yourself if, when you don't know the, 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 how to roll. But as soon as you learn, as I said, you pass the first week, you're addicted. <laughs> that's a challenge now. <laughs> And it's interesting that um, 
in spite of the injuries, people still continue. I was just speaking to Mario at the back there, and he has uh, serious neck injuries, you know. He has serious uh, uh, cervical, uh, he, he's yeah. due for surgeries. He's had multiple surgeries on his knees. And it's not to, to, to scare people, or to put people off, but it's to understand that there are many challenges in life that we face. And if it's the first hurdle, the first week, you get hurt, or you bump your head, or you get grazed yourself, and you stop, because, oh, it's, it's a bit rough. It's, it's not a, it shouldn't be a reason to prevent you from, from, from progressing, from continuing. Okay? It's something that you can grow from and you can learn from. Another question for you, Mario, is just a, around uh, the importance of jiu-jitsu as it relates to women. Uh, you know, I've been married now eight years, and my wife has not taken one lesson in jiu-jitsu. Uh, maybe out of fear of, 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 of injuries, but for me as a, as a, as a practitioner, as somebody who does jiu-jitsu, I, I think it's really, really important. What do you think about jiu-jitsu for women? My, my missus, she, she does jiu-jitsu, she trained with me. And as a self-defense, I think it's the best self, women's self-defense. You won't fight nothing like better than that. Um, it's, growing, it's growing a lot in the UK now. Like, as you've been in Brazil, yeah. so how many women train jiu-jitsu. It's still something new here in the UK, but I think that's something we're going to work on. Like, I'm, I'm trying out a, a, a women class, women, ladies only, for yes. jiu-jitsu, which would be easy for them to, like, you know. But it's the best self-defense for, for women. Yes, it's, a, it's a very good one. Um, just coming back to uh, the psychological challenges. So a lot of us here um, are very interested in understanding how jiu-jitsu can help us with our inner self, with our ability to control the inner um, aggressions that we may have, things like our ego, you know, things like anger. Um, in your experience, does jiu-jitsu challenge the ego? And if it does, how does it do that? How does it make, you know, how does it make you humble? Or does it make you humble? It does make you humble, yeah. Because, as I said, imagine like, as a heavyweight black belt gets submitted by a lightweight black belt or brown belt. It does happen. It does got to make me humble. And I learn, uh, that's, a, that's a lesson to learn. And particularly in that situation. There will be many other situations. And, but I think as a, in the martial art, that's the main, the main class is when the small can win, the big, that's the challenge. And when you have to learn that it, size is not everything, and then you can learn with everyone. As I said before, I learn every day. I learn with my students. No, because I'm taking the class that I know everything. I might have more knowledge because I'm being around <laughs> a couple more years, but it doesn't mean that I know everything. It's a, it's a really nice, beautiful statement, Peter. Um, now, as you've developed, you've, you've, been here, you've, you've, you've been around the block, man. You've done a lot of things, not only in jiu-jitsu, but in your MMA career. Uh, you, you've fought some of the best in the world. Um, and it's, it's, it's now, you know, the body's taking a toll. <laughs> what, what do you struggle with the most now in jiu-jitsu in terms of, like, how you're having to deal with things? Because now, you know, I, I'm, probably, I'm nowhere near your state at the moment, but I feel it, you know, I'm, I'm there, and I've been doing jiu-jitsu now 13 years, and things are sore, things are hurting, and you've got that fresh, you know, 20-year-old blue belt that comes through the door. Mm -hmm. and he wants to just eat your head off, and he just wants to pummel you to the ground. What are you struggling with now, given your experience, your age, your injuries, and your achievements? Because, you know, you were, you were at peak at one point in your career, and perhaps, you know, life takes over. Yeah. You have challenges in life, and now it's not the same. So I, I, I'm just going back to an example that, that I, I saw recently, was with, when, you, when you had a grappling match with uh, Luke Costello. Luke Costello, to put, to, again, context for the, the guys that are familiar, Luke Costello is one of the black belts from Braulio Estima, if you're, if you're familiar with Braulio Estima. And he's, uh, he's a phenom. I think he's now 21 years old, 22 years old. 
He's a his judo black belt. He's one, you know, judo senior black belt represented uh, Great Britain, and he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's an imposing person. He's about six foot four, six foot five, big, big lad, all right. And uh, Mario took on the challenge. It was a, it was a super fight. Was it? Yeah, it, was super a, fight. it was a super fight, grappling match with him. Mario won, and I just found that the most impressive thing because of that difference. When you've got that fresh, young, vigorous individual who's just come in, and then you've got the, the old veteran. Mm -hmm. So what, what, you know, what, what are your challenges now in, 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 in jiu-jitsu? Well, as you said, my life takes over. <laughs> um, my body does answer my mind, as I used to be a couple of years ago. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you, it was more for the injuries I got. I know a lot of guys in my age that are much, much more healthy than me. But maybe they didn't train or did what I did in the past. It's most of doesn't respond the same way because of my injuries. Okay. But when I roll with the young, like I know like most of my students, they are like twenty five years old and um, they are really some are really good. And uh, I play games, I always say I play games, and I have to win the match before we start. So it's my experience. I know, I know what, what I can do and I know what I cannot do. And um, I always try to set the game um, as my game when I roll with someone that I don't know or someone really good. And, and Luki, I remember Luke, Luke Costello, and I mean, everyone was saying before, ah, let's say you're done. He's good, he's really good. And there was, I got a lot of respect for him because I, I met his father. His father used to train with me in the Wolf Slayer during Andy, MMA. Yeah, Andy, Andy, yeah, he trained with me in the Wolf Slayer. And uh, they were once said, like, he, he's going to take you down. I said, no, I'm going to take you down. Yeah, but if you take it down, he's really good and God, he's going to triangle you. I said, oh, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> I cannot stay on his feet. I cannot stay on his guard. So. But... I play games, as I said, I mean, I, I, I took the time, I remember he went to try to like, do, do like a dash barai and then just hold his leg, you know what I mean? And then I knew that would be point for me because he was off balance, so I took him down. And then I pass his guard and I pull, make, get him in pull guard again to pass again. So I, I never went for it for a submission because I knew he's young, he's strong. So by the time I try to go for a submission, I'll, I'll gas. So I just play in my game and stay on top. So I, I use the knowledge and then I use the experience. So it's it's a strategy, it's yeah, knowledge, it's yeah, understanding. Always. And also, you know, acknowledging the strengths of others. You know, it's something that, you know, we can't go, um, you know, crazy every single time that we train. And you have to use a level of strategy, have a level of understanding of your opponent, and work to your strengths and perhaps the weaknesses of others. But equally, the tenacity that I, I, I saw in the match, with, uh, when I saw this on, on, you know, on, on YouTube, it's just it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. If you see the takedown that Mario did, passing the guard, uh, the guys who are familiar with this terminology that I'm using now, uh, you will appreciate uh, that match. It's a really, really interesting match. Mario, what, what has been the most uh, humbling experience in your career in jiu-jitsu, or in your time in jiu-jitsu, anything, even if from your, your old days, or what's, the, what's really like, you went home and you were just, you know, really humbled by what, no, what's... Oh, oh, this one thing that I, the most important moment for me and in jiu-jitsu was when I start going out with Castle and Grace. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I say, that was outside the gym. Right? Basically, let me tell the story. The first day living in Rio, right? I went to, oh, I went to the gym. I already knew Carson, but he already had a new team because everyone was left, right? And he put me to train with his best, best guy, Navalhada. He's a good friend of mine. And I, I submit me like a couple of times, and he goes like, wow. And he got again, and then I got, I got this guy again. So. We became really good friends after that, and I got that from that now on. I got his respect, and the fact that every time we go get something to eat, he invite me. That for me, let's put it this way: Carson Grace was my my idol, I say, and uh, I don't really have many idols right now. But Carson was one, and it's still in memory. And then uh, the fact that I was like 
becoming his friend, and I was his student. You know what I mean? That for me was the best moment in Jiu Jitsu in my life. Also, was the best time in Jiu Jitsu was the training because I was surrounded of really good Jiu Jitsu guys. And uh, in Jiu Jitsu, in my, all my life, if I can pick one moment, that would be the moment. There would be many more other moments, but that, this one is the moment I had with the Carson Grace while, while I was in Rio. Well, it's beautiful to hear. So I said, it kind of reflects a lot back to some of our experiences, me and um, Sidi Omar, uh, when we went to Brazil as well. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and you're very close with one of my favorite instructors, uh, Ricardo de la Riva, yep. who trains in, in Brazil. And for me, he epitomizes, you know, the kind of humble but extremely capable individuals who, you know, you, you see him on the street, you know, he's, he's got gray hair now, and he's walking around, and he's, you know, I was in Brazil for a month, and, you know, he has thousands of students, thousands of people that come and see him, yet he took the time to remember my name. He took the time to come out, and we go and get guarana, we go, go get uh, cocoa from the beach, and he'd go, you know, and it was this, this is a man who's like one of the most senior black belts of Carson Gracie, uh, world renowned. He's been, you know, he's taught all over the world. But for me, he had the humility, the, uh, the, the sort of courtesy in his heart to show me, you know, as a complete beginner, as a, as a white belt, to come in and, you know, um, host me at his academy. It's just a beautiful thing. And I think this is what some of the art teaches you. Mm -hmm. I think. So, uh, that's really interesting. The, the, the La Riva is, you know, you know about the nickname, uh, the scientist. Yeah. Because everyone, every problem in Jiu Jitsu is to, to solve, like to, to give you the solution for the day. Excellent. Yeah. Speaking a bit more practically now, as a, as a, as a fighting art, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an art form now, combat now, so talking about the psychology, the psychology of, of fighting, um, the, the character aspects, the character building aspects of, of Jiu Jitsu, coming back now to the importance of, of real combat. How important is jiu-jitsu in, in fighting? Just if, if for example, I, I, I put an example to you, you're, uh, you're a coach and you've got one month to train. Um, who should we get to the example? Yeah. So Amjad, Amjad stand up please. Although he's a master in, in Wing Chun, you've got Amjad, you've got to train him. Now he's, Amjad, how, how old are you? <laughs> old enough, old enough, we'll say that. You've got a month to teach, <laughs> you've got a month to teach somebody. Yeah. And for me, I would always, and I'm not saying this because I do jiu-jitsu, but I've experienced it that in a short space of time, jiu-jitsu is very, very effective as a fighting art. What, what you know, what makes jiu-jitsu uh, the most uh, important? Because I remember you, in an interview you said jiu-jitsu for a lot of guys in MMA, that's the most important part. Yeah. What, why is that? We're talking about a fight, uh, fighting for MMA? Fight training for, for like, MMA? Or? Yeah, like, I think combat, training for MMA, because it, it, I guess it, it, it epitomizes the most uh, purest example of combat. Mm -hmm. Anything goes. Okay. You know? And you know, what, why is Jiu Jitsu important? Well, um, I always say uh, every, every fight starts on your feet, but 90% of the fight ends on the floor, right? So you need to know how to defend yourself on your feet, but it's one, two, three punch. I'm talking about street fight now, yeah? And then goes like headlocks and go to the floor. That's how you need to know how to defend yourself. Um, and MMA, same. Uh, the fights take more time now on the feet because people avoid in the floor more than before. There's no many like talented guys doing ground game in MMA these days. But as everyone knows how to defend, and then how to avoid attacks on the floor. Talking about MMA, if I, if I train someone now and he's got short time for, a, for a fight in MMA, I'm going to teach him, I'm going to try, I'm gonna, we're going to work and attacks. It's as avoiding, defending, and escape. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Avoid the situation, defend the situation, escape for the situation, okay? So if he's already got background on the, on, on the floor and jiu-jitsu, we're gonna get that better because at the end, when you get tired and when they put yourself in a bad situation, that's gonna save him. And there's an even joke about us, only you should save. <laughs> but um, 
the groundwork for MMA has changed a bit because every, every movement is with strikes. Okay, Carson Grace used to say, you punch, sometimes you punch a, a, brown, a black belt in the face and it becomes brown, and you punch again, he becomes purple, you kick him, it becomes blue, and he leave the fight as a white belt. Right. Right? So, so not everyone can take the punch. Everyone can punch, but not everyone can take the punch. So it, it changes, depends, whatever uh, fight we got. These days, like, the MMA changed a lot. It's not like before when Jiu Jitsu was like the number one fight. It's, I think it's still the most important fight, the most important fight and most difficult part in MMA is Jiu Jitsu, it's the groundwork. But we don't have more a Jiu Jitsu guy fighting MMA, one or two or a strike, today we have MMA fighters, we have a new sport, a new martial art which can call MMA. But if I get, as I just said, if I get someone to fight and I got a short time, I will see where he got best and I would get that better. That's the way I see. Is, is Jiu Jitsu um, suitable for everyone? I think there are some people who seem to think, and uh, it's not been my experience, I, I, I found it to be uh, applicable to everybody, but is it suitable for everyone? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, last night I was watching a video. If you, if you heard about Rosado, no? Rosa, Rosado, the only red castle player. Yeah, Rosado, yeah, yeah, Rosado. Mm -hmm. And then there's a student in the gym that's rolling, 78 years old. His brown belt is rolling with the, I mean, yeah. it's rolling. But he was there, the 78 years old, doing something. And then on the, on the, on the, the, tech, the writers will say, like, what's your excuse now? It's, it is for everyone. It is for kids. It, is for, it doesn't matter how age you start your jits. I mean, as I said, you have to pass for the first week, and then you're addicted. Who is your most memorable teacher, and why? Who, you know, in the martial arts, or not in the martial arts, but who's the most memorable teacher that you, you had, and what lesson perhaps did they teach you that really was sticks in the I, I used to train for a lot of good guys. Most, most of them was Class on Grace students and the Jiu Jitsu. I could give stories of each and any one of them. Um, Liborio. Liborio is a great leader. He, if when he was in his classes, he could see, he could feel the vibration of emotion. J just to put some context, Ricardo Liborio is again one of Carlson Gracie's um, uh, top students. Uh, he's an amazing man. Every Carlson Gracie uh, black belt that I met, I met uh, Rodrigo Medeiros in, in, in mm -hmm. California. Um, there's the, the number of black belts that I met, every single one of them said that at the peak of his career, Liborio was the best student of, of Carlson Gracie. He, he won matches. Um, you know, in, 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 in Brazil, there was nobody that could really beat him. Nobody. He used to tap everybody out. So it just, yeah. yeah so I used to train like, with Liborio for a couple of, couple, like, like 17 months in Brazil in Rio, and uh, his classes was unbelievable. The way he, he handled them, the way he teaches, the way he, he's a real humble guy. That's what I remember, he was learning of the blue belt because he, I remember blue belt was showing movement, a normal plata, a, a transition for normal plata. And then he said, well, can you show me again? And he showed me, oh, that's nice. I didn't know that movement, you know what I mean? So and a guy in his position, he could, he could like play, they said, oh yeah, yeah, and then, but he didn't know, and then he showed to everyone that he didn't know that movement. Uh, I think the best guy I call, I've been called, trained with, it's at Ricardo Ribeiro. If I put him back in the ranking, I'll put him in the first one. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a, nice, it's a nice story. It's a nice, uh, interesting thing you said about him, because um, I think uh, often, uh, and this is usually the, the mindset of people who have perhaps never done martial arts before, is that you always seem to think, that the black belt or the highest rank knows it all, they know everything. Or, in perhaps the context that some of us can relate to, the, the sheikh who's just sitting there and everyone's asking him, you know, 101 questions relating to fiqh and hadith and then also the prophetic nutrition and then, you know, he's got to have the answer to everything. Sometimes you can take lessons from people that you don't expect. People perhaps not uh, acknowledged as teachers per se. And that's a great example of, of, of somebody, the Borio is just an amazing jiu-jitsu fighter, coach, teacher, and you know, like Mario just said, he was humble enough and you know, uh, acknowledged, you showed me, show me that again. 
Let me see that again. Oh, that's great, man. Thank you very much for that. It's a very big lesson for us. Really important to, to reflect on. Um, I just wanted to kind of, uh, if, with permission, if we could open it up, uh, looking for Ben. If we've got any questions from our, from our guests, uh, for, for Mario. Yeah? I'm so honored to be in your presence. Uh, I want to ask you a question. I've just recently started BJJ. How do you stay relaxed on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> but the more you know the, tec the, the, the technique, the more relaxed you get. The more you know the game, the more relaxed you get. That's how I play today. <laughs> Would you say that you're now in a, in a position where, I mean, I can stay relaxed when I'm standing up, okay. but as soon as I get the floor, uh -huh. I can move the chains, and I just want your advice of what to, is it a breathing method? Is it the breath, yeah, the breathing matters uh, as well. Is there a, you know, I mean, how many points did you point to that this would be a good idea? The breath, it helps a lot. The way you breathe uh -huh. always helps. Um, but as you know, as you know the technique, the no, get knowledge, you're gonna relax more. Trust me. <laughs> it is hard, but you get there. <laughs> Thank you. When summer starts next year, you all got to enroll into something. One of them started Thai boxing, loves it, and the 12 year old started PJJ. Initially, it was, you know, not, not necessarily my father was pushing me into it, but he, he took it up, but now he's really taken to it. And where uh, he's, you know, you know, pushing him now to go into tournaments and, you know, and to, and to take it for because he, you know, you know sees, a lot, sees a lot in it. So, what advice would you give to a 12 year old really to kind of like, you know, continue on this journey now going forward because he's only young. And just literally just starting out. Just how to keep that motivation and, and you know and the one you should what you should really aspire aspire towards. Just to repeat the question because the sisters might not be able to hear the question. Uh, the brother's asking, he has a twelve year old who's started jujitsu now, and what advice would he would he would he give uh, for someone his age? Is it, uh, and then oh, sorry, so it was the other part you mentioned? What was the other part you mentioned? Some advice for him and uh, uh, what, what, what he should be aspiring towards in, in, his, in his training, in his martial arts training. Sorry, Mike. Well, my, for me it was like, I always want to be the best in, in training, in my class, right? And then by that, I have to train more. I always push myself. I, I, always, I, I always, when I was a professional fighter, I was in the limit, trying to get a bet. And you're only gonna get be the best by training hard, right? Uh, I know he's too young, 12 years old, but that's how it starts, right? And then at martial arts, I was a Thai boxer on Jiu-Jitsu, I just said, it's gonna make him rumble and strong. Um, and the only advice I could give you, like, it's just carry on training. He got a good, good coach, like Lee Simpson, He's a good coach. Coach Jack's a really good coach. Both trained with me as well. It's not because trained with me, but they are good. <laughs> Obviously the best. <laughs> but they are good. That's Lee Simpson is Coach Jack's student. Coach Jack's my student, my black belt. But you never right in the right direction. Just keep going. Can I just ask, how many times do you think they should be training, for example, this 12-year-old to get quite talented? How many times a week should, should he be Three training? Three times a week. The question was how many times should a 12-year-old be training a week? 
And perhaps we could extend that more to even, even the adults, if I, if I could ask Mario, just um, for adults here who may be thinking that, um, you know, if I train Jiu-Jitsu once a month, is that enough? No. <laughs> How often should uh, adults and uh, children be, be training Jiu-Jitsu? Well, Jiu-Jitsu, as you know, it's... Um, every technique is linked. I said, imagine if you go for a class of, port, of uh, English, or I would say Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> go to uh, English class or math, math and math class. I mean, if you miss that week session, class, you might be lost for the next week, right? So it's every technique is linked. Even in a way, you start on the top, attack, and end up like on the bottom, and then how to escape, every, everything is linked. Everything is linked. So the more you, you win, and then I believe three, time, <coughs> three times a week, it's enough. It, that's that, that when you get more. Um, talking about like, not, not, not as a professional. Professional guys training and competing every day, like every day, twice a day, a day in the gym. But three times a week, it's, if you're not two, but three. Minimum. Three is minimum, yeah. yeah. Jitkendo. The question is, uh, what is the difference between what Mario uh, practices and Jeet Kune Do, uh, the art form uh, popularized, kind of uh, invented, if you like, by Bruce Lee? The, 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 uh, the, okay. Uh, well, basically, Jet Kune Do is, is, is a variation for Bruce, uh, of Kung Fu, right, which is a lot like kicks, strikes. Um, and jiu-jitsu is it's grappling. Jiu-jitsu itself is just grappling. There is no strikes. It's um, like wrestling, with gi, with the pajamas, <laughs> and submissions. Well, we got submission chokes, like foot locks, knee bars, arm locks, but there is no strikes in jiu-jitsu. No strikes, no, no kicks, no, just grappling, yeah, basically. The the question was um, when, when you when you're fighting in the ring when you're going to your, 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 your MMA fights, how do you stop yourself from, from, from panicking and the anxiety that, that builds up when, when you're fighting? I still panic. I, I competed last January and the Europeans and I was panicking before my fight. But I, I, I always say, the more you compete, the relaxer you get. The more you fight, the relaxer you get. It's all about the more you be, the more you be on the mat, the more you step on the mat, the more you compete, the more you be under the adrenaline of people watching you compete, of uh, compete against someone you never, never met, someone sometimes better than you, sometimes not uh, worse than you. The more you get and put yourself in that situation, the more relaxed you get. Thank you. The, the question was, um, out of all the UFC fighters that currently now, uh, which ones do you, do, you, do you prefer, which ones do you think are good? To be honest, this, the, the ones in the UFC now, that I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm too old school. But if I could pick one, as a character, I would, I would, I would get McGregor. He's a, he's a great fighter, he's a great talker. Uh, and then he brought a lot to the game. I mean, it he, he shows that you really can make. But just to explain with my, my favorite ones, I was BJ Penn, mm. Ron Couture, Chuck Liddell, these guys like, I used to like more than the new ones. But McGregor, yeah. Oh, if I have to pick one of the new ones, I'll pick McGregor. <laughs> What's been your biggest challenge while training, so growing up training, competing professionally? What's one of the things that's consistently been playing on your mind? The question is, what, is, what has been your biggest challenge growing up training as you, as you continue your fighting? Well, it's changed with the, with the time. As I said, before I was to be, I, was, I, I want to be the best. I was to challenge myself every session. And then, 
when to co get be a good be a good coach, coaching good good fighters. And now it's only to teach. It's like get the it's not get <clears throat> get someone talented and make make him a good jujitsu fighter is easy. I want to get the the ones that no talent. The white belts that they know how to, I mean, doesn't know nothing. That's my challenge, man. I like to work with the, the impossible and make it possible. That's, that's what it is now. Um, you talked, a, you spoke a lot about fighting and training and all that, but I was wondering whether, you know, the, looking at it holistically, what about things like food, diet, meditation, you know, that kind of stuff, how much importance does that play in becoming a top fighter? So the, the, the question was, uh, we've talked a great deal about fighting and the arts, but also holistically looking at the martial arts, how important is nutrition, meditation, uh, that type of thing? Um, the sport, the MMA became very, very professional. So the more you, you get to yourself, the better you put in a game. I do believe if you're spiritual, are strong, and then if your diet is good, if you train right, you go up more than your opponent. So yes, it is important. Unfortunately, not all many fighters does the whole combo, let's put it this way. They all do the, the, the physically, the technical, the diet, but they forget the spiritual part of the game, which it is, you need a balance. That's my view, okay? I'm, I'm a very spiritual guy. I'm, I'm very believe in God. And I always, as a, when I was a professional fight, I always tried to get the balance. I've never been good in diet, uh, but, <laughs> but before the fights, before the fights, I always had my eight, eight week camps, and I was doing my diet for eight weeks. And I do believe, yeah, that's necessary. You have to be strong spiritual, you have to be strong physically, technically, mental. Your diet has to be good. And then the more benefits I get for myself, the better my fight is going to be. What's your favorite? Submission. So, uh, what is your favorite submission? So for, for the, 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 the people who aren't familiar, submission is uh, uh, a lock or a choke of some kind, something that uh, completely uh, disables you, if you like. What is your favorite submission? <laughs> I could say it's what you give me. Whatever you give me, I'll take it. <laughs> but I, guillotine, I won like my last five fights and then maybe fight guillotine and then, yeah. I'm, it's interesting, we, we showed the guillotine yesterday. The guillotine is a, a show that we, we showed yesterday, so. Yeah, I like guillotine a lot. <laughs> master the guillotine, his guillotine is awesome. If you see, he's done many um, uh, tutorials online uh, Gracie Mag has done a few, uh, and it's nice to see the, the, the approach that uh, Mario takes with the guillotine. Any other questions? I'd be interested to hear if the sisters have any questions. Oh, yes, we do. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. How, how can women benefit from jiu-jitsu other than becoming physically strong? How do you think they can benefit other than the fact that they can become physically fitter? How else can women benefit from jiu-jitsu? Oh, the... the the sport itself, the grappling, it's because you work a lot of parts of your body. It's not like you're on your feet all the time or in your back all the time. Um, it's a lot of abs and core because you're on your back and then you, you work a lot like seating up, like to go for submissions or chokes or sweeps. Uh, legs, because you're using a lot of us for your passing or defending. And uh, a five minute roll, easy, you lose 1,000 calories maybe more, if in Brazil, <laughs> much more, <laughs> depends for the weather. But it, you, it, it helps, yeah, tones, strength, flexibility. Are there any other benefits apart from the physical ones? Like, um, I mean, you, you alluded to them earlier on, around like confidence, for example. So I think a lot of women, um, not that they lack confidence, it's not that, it's just gaining a level of confidence that allows them to, um, um, you know, perhaps walk safely at night. So, I, I, you know, I, I get this question a lot. I've had um, couples come to me and the wives have said to me, you know, I want to learn jiu-jitsu. But, um, you know, just to, 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 to put things into context, Mario, um, uh, we have, uh, you know, 
the access that our women uh, have to, towards the martial arts is somewhat limited. So they um, perhaps would like to know what are the, apart from obviously the physical great benefits, what can they gain from, from Jiu Jitsu as an art form, as, as you know, something that can help them with their life? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Once with the men, physically normally is stronger than a woman, and then they will see that they, can, they will be able to roll and train with a, a man, but equal sometimes, because the techniques allow you to like to, to handle it, sometimes win the, the trainer. I see many times like girls like rolling and, and, and again better than the guys. And then sometimes another, the guys a little bit heavier than the, the girls. I saw many times. That's, I just said that's the only sport when the weight and the strength is, you can eliminate, you know what I mean? Like a, a weak, really weak and weak and really strong. Like when you, when you box in the heavyweight, always going to have more chance than the lightweight. When a heavyweight punch a, light, a lightweight guy is, is one good night, God bless you. you know I mean, when in, in Jiu Jitsu, uh, that's what, I mean, when a heavyweight gets someone in a, in, in a position, you got more chance to escape, and then you got more chance to submit the heavyweight guy. So that would be the same with a woman. Um, okay. You do a Jiu-Jitsu player. What other martial art would you recommend to fuse in with as a standard? The, the question was, um, Mario is primarily a Jiu-Jitsu fighter. And uh, what other martial arts would you recommend you, you, you train as well to mesh in, to make a, a complete a compliment to you? If you already know the ground, I just said before, you need to defend yourself, how to defend yourself on your feet. I love boxing. I love boxing. And, and I like Thai boxing along as well. So that's, I do boxing and I do Thai, I, thai boxing. Any strike we are, would help, but boxing or Thai box it would be the the, probably the best one for to complement for your like self defense or um, MMA, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, the question that came from the sisters was um, who was the founder of, of Jiu Jitsu and what were uh, the person's spiritual beliefs? So, um, I, you know, I, we can go into the, 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 I mean, in the modern context in understanding the Gracie family, there's a great book called The Gracie Way, and that can give you a really good understanding and insight into the history of the evolution of Jiu-Jitsu over the last century, if you like, uh, the likes of Carlos Gracie, Helio Gracie, and their family, and as they bought the, 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 the uh, Jiu-Jitsu um, uh, that's now, you know, that we're all familiar with now on the ground. But I, I just want to make something clear about the history of, of Jiu-Jitsu. It's ancient. Wrestling is ancient. It's not something that's modern. It's not something that only the Gracies did. And um, you, you really got to understand that as well. In terms of the, the spiritual beliefs, um, I, I, I'll just speak a little bit just, just uh, from my experience with um, Carlson Gracie Jr., <clears throat> uh, who is the, uh, the son of Carlson Gracie Sr., who gave uh, Mario his black belt. And he was a deeply, deeply spiritual individual. Me and Ustad Omar, uh, we spent some time with him when we were traveling. Uh, and you know, he, uh, quite a funny story I, I, I was telling Mario is that um, my, my friend called me where I was teaching at a judo club and he said, oh, I'm sorry, um, do you mind if somebody else takes your class today? I said, yeah, sure, who is it? Is it my instructor, is it Wilson? He said, no, no, it's, uh, I forget his first name, man, but it's something Gracie. So I laughed and I said, look, mate, if he's got a surname Gracie, I think he's more than qualified to take my class. And lo and behold, I went up and I picked up and it was Carlson Gracie Jr. And as we drove uh, to the judo club, uh, he looked at me and, you know, he, he asked, oh, you Muslim? I'm a Muslim, I don't know. yes, I'm a Muslim. And he asked about Islam and he, he, was, he was really giving us an insight into his beliefs of God and how, um, you know, it really, uh, you know, a lot of people have this um, uh, definition of God within themselves and you would agree with that. As Muslims, if they were to articulate to you their belief or their understanding in a higher being, you would concur with that. You would actually agree that, yeah, that's actually what I believe. 
And that, that's what I think me and Omar certainly found when we spoke to Carlson Gracie uh, Jr. I just want to kind of ask the, the question about, uh, to, to, to Mario, just in terms of um, your spiritual beliefs and, and, and also uh, about uh, you, some of your teachers, you know, how, how, you know what were their, 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 their sort of spirituality uh, with some of your teachers, even yourself? No, um, as a Brazilian, I grew up in a Catholic family. And, um, but with my coach, we know they were like talking about God outside the gyms when you have our private conversations. And um, most of them was very spiritual, very like connected with God. As I am, I'm, I'm, uh, I believe everyone has those you know, ways to, to find God part of what religion you got and and then as far you do it right by God. That's what I that's the way I see. You know what I mean? I'm I'm praying every every night and I'm trying to do my best with my kids and my family. And I'm I'm keeping my part by teaching Jiu Jitsu or talking with kids. You know what I mean? And as I said, I'll I'll just try to do to do it right. I hope I'm doing <laughs> um the question here of how does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu compare to the wrestling with the martial arts of the Sahaba? So, just to, 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 to inform, uh, the Sahaba were the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. So, uh, as Muslims, you know, uh, we, we hold the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the, the founder of, of Islam. And um, the people that surrounded him were known as, as his companions, and they were, they were very revered. So, um, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, um, they engaged in wrestling. It was their, you know, they, they would fight and uh, they would engage in, in the, 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 the arts of the sword, uh, archery and wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, to answer that question, it's, it's quite a lengthy uh, discussion and I think our beloved Sheikh Ibrahim knows it very, very well. And I think I'd, I'd leave that question to him when he's here, inshallah, to articulate that. Okay, if there's a question. Did you have The question was, um, did you ever find in, in your life a period of time where you felt you weren't getting better and then how, how, how would you move on that, from that and then uh, continue on, on the upward plateau? Many times. <laughs> uh, sometimes after losing the fight and then I was question, always question myself, did they train enough or he was better than me, it was a lucky moment. Yeah, but I'll be myself in this situation a couple of times. And um, I just got over and just got back to training again. I mean, realized my mistakes, watching the fights. I never, I never felt that I would get any better by normal training. Always was, was after fight, one fight that I, that I was losing. And then I was just get, get back again, watch the videos, what I did wrong, what can I do better. Sometimes change my training. Not like today, if I would fight again, I know exactly what I should do. By get fit, what, I, what kind of training, how can I mix. Um, unfortunately, like years back in the time, like we don't have the knowledge to do it. Everything was by experience. Even today, there is no science that proves what training is right for MMA. Because there's so many sports like you have to be, you have to be a striker, wrestling, ground game. You have to be fit, in your diet, and then there is no. That's the hard part of MMA is to put everyone together, everything together for one, for one, for one sport. But yeah, I've been many times, and was just like, get back to myself and I look what I did wrong, and just start again. That's what makes fighters fight. So we'll take two more questions and then. Uh, we'll so, in terms of the, the training side of jiu-jitsu, is it uh, more cardio-based, or are you weight training? What do you do for your physical fitness? It, it is both. We need the cardio. We need we need the the the, the, the weight lifting, uh, especially when you do like for competition, as I said before. If you are compete, if you are like <clears throat> for. Five years ago, 
and in England have no many tournaments, BJJ tournaments. That group, like in the last five years, if you want, you compete every weekend, gi and no gi. And then IBJJF is the organization who rolls the jiu-jitsu outside Brazil, and uh, it's massive now. So you can compete every month in a good tournament around Europe or in America. Of course, to do that, you have to be in a high-level training. So then, the more, the more, the high level you get, the, the more you need for your session, for, for your training. But it's cardio and it's weightlifting as well, all in balance. Last question is. The great dichotomy. So the question was that um, perhaps somebody wants to take up uh, jujitsu or the, the, the art and is not fit enough. Um, should they perhaps start training first, doing some cardio, get to the level of fitness, and then do jujitsu? No, no, because what? Your fitness for jujitsu, you're going to get in jujitsu. Your fitness for running, you're going to get running for swimming, swimming. Uh, you can get, some, you can get uh, benefits outside, like running, maybe my bike, but bike or running won't get you fit for that. That'll help you, yeah, definitely. But what you need to get fit in jujitsu is. <laughs> rolling. It's all I like all kinds of sports. Same. I think, I think you need the answer to that. Steve. What would you say is the most important how to train for someone to What is the most important character trait that one should inculcate in themselves as a person uh, to? To, to get the most benefit out of jiu-jitsu. Like internally, it's not something like, oh, you know, you know, he's got to have a really powerful legs or anything. Inside, what character uh, trait is really most important to, to get the most benefit? Deter determination. Determination. You have to keep going. Sometimes, sometimes you, beat, you, can, you can beat mentally. I mean, by, I'll, I'll give an example. Two weeks ago, I was rolling with one of my students. He's really good on foot locks. I put a foot lock on me. I was like that to the top, but I did change my expression. I was like, sure, like, I think it was okay, and he gave up. And was, <laughs> when he let go, I was like, oh, God, thanks. But by, first of all, as I said before, I was playing games, you know what I mean? If I was like, show me my face, how painful that was, and how, how I want him to tap, he would cut it on. He would be stronger than me. And then by the time I showed that like, I could handle it, and play games and pray for him, but just let go. Determination, I think that's the most important thing. Can I just ask, um, would um, you know, the uh, freestyle and record wrestling, and BJJ, uh, would you advise someone to do that together, just because they want, you want to be on the back, you want to the likes of uh, the freestyle wrestling, the Olympic style wrestling, and uh, Greco-Roman, uh, should we do uh, these wrestling forms as well as, 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 as Jiu-Jitsu? Once again, depends what you're, what, what you're looking for. I love wrestling, freestyle wrestling and Greco-Roman. I used to do a lot, a lot of Greco-Roman. It did help a lot for, for my MMA career and for my submission wrestling competition, because cause I'm a judo black belt, when I, do, when I could do compete with gear, like I switch off for, for judo. So I, I got the grip, so I can use, I use the judo throws. If I do no gear, I use the Greco-Roma or freestyle. Yeah, it does help a lot. If you can put it together, I would, I would go just for freestyle because in freestyle you got the Greco-Roma and you got the freestyle, all the leg takedowns. So yeah, if you can put it together, have, if you find time for yourself to do it, yeah. <laughs>